the worldwide and highly successful Radical Cup graced North American shores for the first time in 2013, an exclusive sports car series for the world's largest racing car manufacturer, and multi-class Le Mans style racing for its 270 horsepower SR3 and 460 horsepower bespoke V8 engined SR8. By the time the season's final green flag had waved at New York's Monticello Motor Club, over 40 competitors from across North America, gentlemen drivers and the sport's current and future stars had set out to claim two class championships and some very impressive prizes. It's an honor to be a part of the series. Uh, and it was a fantastic series, fantastic drivers, great level of competition. With so much on the line, the season was a story of heart-stopping action, rivalries and friendships, turmoil and triumph, and stars in the making. The desert and snow-capped mountains of Utah provided a scenic backdrop to rounds one and two, and it was game on from the get-go, as drivers ran three and four wide. No one was giving an inch. In both races, Randy and Ryan Carpenter tried to steal the limelight with spectacular spins. But it was Gerhard Watzinger and John Faub who stole the show, winning both days and becoming the first to write their names into a new chapter of North American motorsport. From the dry Utah desert, the drivers descended on the home of Petit Le Mans for rounds three and four, as did the rain. While Watzinger fended off Ari Strauss and Jim Booth to make it four wins in a row, both races at Road Atlanta saw a turn of fortune for Faub. Tony Bullock may have led the most number of laps each day, but it was George Kurtz who broke through for back-to-back -back wins with impeccable timing, especially in Sunday's wet conditions. I knew I had to get in front of Tony before the, uh, before the safety car came out, so we pushed hard and finally got in front of him. For many, Sunday's deluge turned that race into one of survival. The big news out of Atlanta was that while Bullock didn't have a win to his name, he was a championship contender. I think we actually may have taken the points lead at this point and uh, increased it. You know, our, our main goal has always been for the championship, and uh, you know, you, you can win a championship with second places. So, yet settling for second wasn't on anyone's mind as the calm of Monterey, California, turned into chaos during round five. Ryan Carpenter became the first man besides Watsinger to take an SR8 pole, while Dave Tweedley made a stellar start. Kurtz fell behind Falb and clashed with Bullock. A series of spins, including Tweedley's, then led to a safety car being deployed. And the restart allowed Carpenter to reclaim the lead and Bullock to sneak inside Falb. But contact with Harry Ching caused chaos, Kurtz to lose out and Bullock to lose precious championship points. Nevertheless, he had taken his first victory. Carpenter broke Watzinger's winning streak, but round six restored order. Booth finishing second both days, and he was having a ball. This car is just a boatload of fun to drive. It pulls some serious Gs as compared to the GT cars. I still love the GT cars, but the bang for the buck and the, the thrill, the absolute thrill, is, the, uh, is this SR8 Radical. Faub also returned to the top of the podium and the SR3 points table as the drivers headed back east. I mean, every track is different. Every track has its own uh, unique challenges, you know, from, uh, from Road Atlanta to Miller to Laguna Seca to now VIR. Um, I mean, it's incredible. The challenge at VIR? Rain. Newcomer Daniel Torres captured the SR8 pole and was impressed. Um, I think the series is going to continue to grow. Um, very well organized, all the competitors seem really happy to be here and it's just a great time. Also starring, rookie Todd Slusher, who led SR3 after surviving the tough conditions unlike many. Jim Booth flew off at full speed, he didn't, his wheels didn't even turn. The 13 car went off on the inside. I stayed on with Gerhardt and we went down the hill but then he spun, was facing me, I had to go off in the grass. And then when everybody, then the rest of the whole field went off of the grass. But upon the restart, Slusher became the next victim. Bullock claiming his second win of the season from Mark Allen and Naj Hussein. But again, it was bittersweet. He was penalized half his points. With Faub, his main rival, absent, this wasn't what he needed. 
That came on Sunday, as he dominated to take his third victory and the championship lead. Uh, a little bit of redemption, I think. Um, I just gave it all I had. Um, felt like I had something to prove and wanted to go out there and, and prove it. Redemption for Todd Slusher too, finishing second. Critically, Mr. Consistency, Mark Allen's results had moved him into third in the points. On the flip side, Watsinger's Saturday dream turned into a nightmare. A puncture preventing his second win of the weekend. Yeah, well, that's what Mario Andretti said. Racing is a humbling experience, right? Booth left to fend off Torres for the win. And I'll tell you what, Jim gave me a run for my money. He's a hard guy to pass. Yeah, I wanted to get one of these wins this year. That battle was just a warm-up for the penultimate event at Autobahn Country Club. Le Mans star David Hennemar Hansen came out to play, and along with Corey Lewis, went straight to the front. Still under the watchful eyes of the stewards, Bullock was timid, and the returning Falve overtook him on track and in the points, before going side-by-side -side with Hansen for the SR3 lead. Kurtz capitalised too, then an error from Falve swayed the points back in Bullock's favour. The train behind John Morris's SR8, allowing Falb to claw back through. Hansen clinched the win, Falb the championship lead. Responding on Sunday, Bullock stole second from Kurtz, but he couldn't catch Falb. With Lewis's demise, Watsinger added two more wins to his score. He shared his podiums with Booth, Morris and Strauss. Well, you have guys here who are ready to step, to step to the next level. And there are guys running here in the top times who could jump in tomorrow into a prototype in an ALMS, and I bet they'd be competitive. The season now down to the final races at Monticello Motor Club. But it wasn't just the championships on the line. Booth was determined to take the final two wins. Coached by Colin Braun, Watsinger was unfazed. He's pretty optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm optimistic as well, so hopefully my optimism is better than his. <laughs> but after clinching pole, Wassinger crashed, causing a minor fire and major repairs. Keeping calm, he took the green and drove off into the distance, while it was Merzon in third who felt the pressure from Dennis O'Leary. On the bumper, man. And then the last hundred yards, I found the spot. But I was looking for it the whole race, I just couldn't find it. He, I was waiting for a mistake and he wasn't making many. So we were right on each other's bumpers. It's the best race he gets, it doesn't get any better than that. He was just a number of new drivers to make a big impression. Oliver Prince von Anhalt worked his way through to take third in SR3 and did a similar job on Sunday. Going through the field, that's the fun. I mean, I, I have to say I've driven hundreds of races. Those two were probably my favorite races of all of them. His results helped Kurtz close in on Allen, still third in the championship points, as did Ron Eckhart's Sunday qualifying performance. Well, there's four of us within a second. I, I just pipped Mark by four one thousand, so, and yeah. he's pretty quick, so we're, we're going to have a pretty good race today, I think. Allen was optimistic. George is definitely faster than I am normally, but I'm going to give it all I got to see if I can uh, hold my standing. Kurtz unsure. Well, with our races, you never know what's going to happen. His prediction coming true with a heavy hit for Peter Strasser. Allen's grasp on the final title trophy, slipping through his fingers as the double yellows went out and the Prince made an illegal pass. Kurtz taking to the podium to claim second in the race and third in the championship. But the day and the year belong to the race winners. With Faub choosing to race in Europe, Bullock could have cruised, but instead he dominated both races, stamping his authority on the championship with five wins to Faub's four. Uh, I would like to say to John Faub, congratulations. Word is he got third place in uh, the Euro Cup, and my hat's off to him. I'd like to thank him for doing a good job representing us out there. Um, but, you know, it almost felt at times that this was, uh, this was ours to lose, and like it was almost being taken away from us and that made us drive even harder and want it even more. So um, I'm truly thrilled. And as for Watsinger, with 10 wins, he was crowned both SR8 and outright champion. He wasn't just going to race in Europe, but to test a Le Mans car as well. This was uh, kept me going. Yeah? I mean, both these prices are absolutely fantastic. Yeah? Can't wait. My wife already said, did you buy the ticket for me to spa? Yeah? So uh, it will be probably two tickets to spa now. <laughs> Taking second and third, Booth and Merzon. Todd Slusher awarded the coveted Rookie of the Year title. 
and as the champagne flowed for the final time during the inaugural Radical Cup season, there was a realisation. This was just the beginning.